Hey, welcome back to the 85 South Show. This is another rendition of the Black Excellence Spotlight. And today we're going to be spotlighting my man, Scapegoat Joe. Hey, Joey. All right, welcome back to another rendition of the 85 South Show. Turn the music down, man. We about to, we about to hit them with some breaking news, man. 85 South Show, news from the street. And you know, we usually don't keep up with what's going on in the news, unless it's black. So today we got some black ass news facts. These is facts. This ain't what we heard. This ain't what somebody told us. These are facts. You know what I'm saying? I got my man Jones in here in the trap with me today. I know you looking like, man, who the fuck is Jones? <laughs> well, if you sit back and relax, I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you who Jones is. You know, I'm gonna give you a brief synopsis. So, so apparently, yes, over sir. there in your neighborhood, yes, sir. shit done got real. Yeah, man. Uh, Give us the rundown. Okay. Because I seen uh, the news clip. You saw it? I seen it. Okay. You talking okay. big shit? Yeah, man. Uh, I'm from Zone 6. I'm from East Atlanta. East you know, Atlanta Zone 6. Yeah, we in the building. Um, you know, it was, a, it was a, a video clip that surfaced of a clerk that works at a gas station over in my hood, and he was caught on camera saying, I don't give a fuck about the black neighborhood. You say about the black neighborhood? I don't give a fuck about the black neighborhood, okay? You said fuck the black neighborhood. Yeah, I don't give a fuck, okay? Come on, go ahead. Put that you put, okay? Fuck the black neighborhood, Jim. Yeah, go ahead. Put that you talk anywhere that we want to put it. Come That's on. how you feel, Jim? Okay, go ahead now. Put on that you... Yeah. So uh I went up to the store to address it. And uh when I got there, uh, I was just showing people in the neighborhood the video on the phone, you know, it went viral on on Instagram, so I'm showing people in the hood on the phone, and uh, the owner comes out, he's like, what are you doing? I said, I'm showing everybody how y'all feel about us before we spend our money here. So he says, get the fuck out of here, you fool stamp cockroach. No, he did. Yeah, Do mama. you? Yeah, on my mama, yeah. Yeah, he said that to me. Man, you bullshit, yeah. you was a big nigga. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> he Hold said up. That, this nigga yeah. said, you fool stamp cockroach. Yeah, he said, get the fuck out of here, you fool stamp cockroach. So that's, fact, what they, that's the new racism. You they know call what? Them food stamp cockroaches. I don't feel now. like he was freestyling, dog. He said it before. Yeah, I, I feel like this is this is lingo that he probably kicking his in his everyday thing. You know what okay. I'm saying? But uh, at any rate, uh, you know, he called the police on me because I refused to leave. Once he called the police, uh, you know, they obviously gave me a warning, a trespassing warning. So I packed it up, went to the crib. Three days later, he called somebody else from the hood, a begging monkey. So. Uh, this is uh it's not an isolated incident like this is how these this is how these cats refer to us this is the level of respect they have for the people in our community and it's not this this ain't nothing that's specific to our hood or to this corner store because all across the nation we'll walk in and we'll get this same kind of treatment you know what i mean right uh, they might be looking down on us for whatever reason even the condition of the store you know we've all seen it you walk in and this particular store on a rainy day, you can look around and it's uh, buckets of rainwater sitting around the store. Right. Collecting rainwater dripping through the ceiling, you know. So outside of the racism, you know, uh, these cats, they, they, they're accustomed to handling us a certain kind of way. But we don't have to take it. You know what I'm saying? We don't have to deal with it. So when he spoke to me that way, and once he called somebody else in the hood this, this, this disgusting name, uh, we started to boycott the store. Yeah. And we boycotted the store. To the point. For 66 days until this owner agreed to sell the store. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so, uh, you know, I just, I wanted to speak about the, uh, 
the power that we have, the power of black economics. You know, in this, in this news clip, he had a very apologetic tone. He was talking about how we, we impacted his business by 70%. You know, and that's uh, within the course of 66 days, that's us showing up, you know, every day, uh, you know, between eight to 10 hours a day and just applying pressure, just letting people in the hood know, you know, this is what these cats were caught on camera saying. Uh, you know, it's a, it's, first of all, it's a privilege to get our money, you know what I'm saying? And, and I want all of us to be aware of that fact that it's a privilege to first of all, even do business in our neighborhood, but second of all, to get our black dollars. It's a privilege, dog. Every time we go and, and patronize a business, even if we shopping with a black owned business, right? whoever you spending your money with, it's a privilege when you put your money in someone's hand, you know what I'm saying? And respect should be the minimum. That should be the bare minimum. There should be gratitude attached to those dollars, but respect should be the, the minimum. Right. How long this this dude been in the hood over there? This cat has been the owner of this, this gas station for 23 years. So he done got comfortable. Oh, man, he too comfortable. Too comfortable. Arrogant. You know mm. what I'm saying? But, but we have paid him and, and people like him that come into our communities and siphon our dollars out of our hood. What's his nationality? Um, it's an Indian guy. Ain't nobody put hands or feet on them. You know what? Uh, don't don't answer that. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I will say though. Uh, you know, it was, it was a lot of times I had to talk like I had to talk cats down from the hood. I had to let them know like, nah. They're like, man, you know, well, let's just do this or let's just do that. And I'm like, nah, it's very important that we do it this way. Yeah, but next time. It ain't gonna be a next time. But I'm just saying, like in the future, like I feel like as a black community, we have gotten so lenient with our ass whoopings. Oh yeah. And we got so many people that are ready to go to jail. Yeah. That's and they true. not being used. Mm -hmm. You exactly. know what I mean? <laughs> we got all these soldiers, man. You're I'm right talking now. about niggas who would go to jail just, just to get a tattoo. I'm talking about, I'm talking about niggas. For you fun. ever had that cousin that go to jail all the time and he called the house and be like, don't come get me. He said, don't come get me. Yeah, just do it for fun. I'm gonna lay down. He said, I'm gonna lay down. I'm yeah, gonna man, don't, don't tell my mama don't do nothing. Nah, man, but you, uh, you right though. I mean, I had to talk a lot of cash down. Like, nah, that's not how we gonna do it. It's very important that we do this lawfully. It's very important that we exercise our constitutional rights and we and we boycott uh, right here from this public property that we're allowed to stand on. You know, uh, exercising our right to bear arms. I know, cause it probably was hard as hell to get the, the crackheads and shit to stop shopping in there. We not shopping in here, JJ. Man, go on with that black power <laughs> shit. Man. I don't want to hear that shit. Hey, Mama, you know get them cigarettes at. Man, you know what? Them cigarettes, two dollars or something now, man. I've been knowing it. Yeah, you he right. He ain't never said that shit to me. And that's the same. Hey, you know what though? And that's I got a lot of that. And that's the sad part about it because as a collective, if he say the shit to me, he's saying it to you. You know what right. I'm saying? Right. And if he say it to somebody black else, black people grandma, so used to trauma though. We yeah. so used to being treated bad and abused that we don't even recognize it a lot of times. It's a self-esteem issue. Out of all them years you said he been there, ain't no, niggas are probably not heard way worse than, oh, fuck you, you dothead motherfucker, and just walk down the store. You know what yep. I'm saying? It's like, uh -huh. this is shit you see every day. Yeah. But we ain't got to put up with it, though. I know. I stopped going to them dirty-ass gas stations because there's really too that. many niggas getting killed in them bitches. For real, though. I don't stop at no gas station at night. Yeah, she said at none. At, at night? night? <laughs> I don't buy nothing out them bitches at night. I'm, hey, I cut my shit off. Yeah, I mean, it, it go down, though. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you if you pull the, pull the data, you know what I'm saying? A lot of cats have lost their lives. In those stores. Yeah. We, as black men, we go to the store too goddamn much. I've been saying that. We go too much. But, you know, it's a compounded issue. You know what I'm saying? Like, on, on Gresham Road alone, it's like five gas stations within a one-mile stretch. That's how you know you're in the hood. It's a lot. You, know you don't I mean? see that shit unless you're in the hood. Gas station should be right across the street from each other. Yeah, it's a gas station across from a gas station across from a liquor store that's literally right across the street from another liquor store. And you know the fact I can't that figure out who's drinking all this goddamn liquor. Hey man, they drinking it, man. Yeah, they drinking it. You mm -hmm. know. Um, but you know, like I said, our self esteem, we have to we have to be more aware of the relationship between patronizing a business and making someone successful. Right. Because when we shop here, we're not shopping at this billion dollar Exxon. We're shopping at, at this, this store. $30,000 franchise. You know what I'm saying? Owned by this disgusting pig who gonna call people grandmas black bitches and think we're supposed to put up with it. Yeah. 
Not mine though, cause my cousin get ready to go. <laughs> I got. I was asking if y'all had some, cause I know there's some niggas on my side. Just yeah. just need any reason to act a goddamn fool, and I ain't gonna talk them out of it, cause I'm sick of it. I mean, sometimes it's necessary. It is always necessary. That's what the white people just showed us, man. Black people gotta stop being passive aggressive. Yeah. If you want some shit, take it. Yeah, for real. Though. I just got down walking and marching. Yeah, for real. Slap the shit out of somebody and run up in their spot. Yeah. Yeah, man. All you need is a bunch of motherfuckers. Yeah, a bunch of white folks. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's different. Nigga. It's different when it's a bunch of white folks. I though. know. Yeah. You get these white people in Georgia start, what did you? <laughs> God damn it, we're going with you. Yeah, man. It's uh, it's new rules dealing with them. That's man. what's up, man. But, uh, but we don't have to put we don't have to put up with that. Like we don't have to deal with it ever. And uh, you know we've shown that. You know what I'm saying the hood came together. Uh, the the initial cat that was caught on camera, his name was uh, Jimmy. So what we started? An Indian dude named Jimmy. Yeah, Indian dude that ain't his Jimmy. name. That's not his fucking name. That's yeah. the name he adopted when he got to America. Yeah, you know how they do it. Motherfucker probably named Ramaz or some shit. It, yeah, you know what? We'll never know because yeah. it's probably a long list. NJ. of them. He's one of them. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Must but, have. Uh, what we did? Yeah. <laughs> we, fuck y'all. Them stories we, stinking. I don't give a fuck. Who's, <laughs> my opinion. We not gonna get into that one. Uh, yeah, yeah. We not gonna tell you that. You can't. It, he don't own it no more. Yeah, That's nah. The, the store stunk when he, he never had will. Jimmy. But what we did was every Friday we started to throw this celebration called Fuck Jimmy Friday. At the store? At the store. The oh, my, no, oh, nigga, yeah. that ain't no TikTok nowhere. Yeah, yes, nah, nah. We got we got plenty of footage, but uh, this was kind of like a ploy that us and the team put together to kind of get the hood excited. T-shirts about and activism. Everything. Yeah, we had shirts. Uh, balloons. Uh, yeah, definitely balloons. Yeah, all of that. Yeah, I had it. Nigga, I, why you ain't called me? I brought our DJs, I couch, girls I smoking hookah. And the trunk. We had uh, real nigga shit. Yeah, for real though. That's how, and that's how you got to do it. That's Where how you got to let them know that you uh, bullshit. Because by the time this come out, black people gonna want to see the footage. I'm telling you, dog. Fuck Jimmy Friday. Upload yeah. all the footage. Yeah, we had DJs. Like I said, we had sidewalk chalk for the kids. They can come out and write their messages on the on the Fuck sidewalk. Fuck Jimmy. Well, you know, we didn't really. Encourage them to say They're that. They're ghetto children. You could uh, let them. They, yeah, you know. These are, these are black children from the project. You could definitely. Yeah, for them. real though. You know, I had my daughter out there. My daughter's seven years old. I had her out there on the bullhorn, and uh, she was just, uh, you know, letting people know that we can't shop here. You know what I'm saying? Don't shop here. Please don't shop here. They don't like us, and uh, that was kind of the message that resonated. It turned into a uh, a competition, so to speak. We were trying to get people not to shop there. We, the right. DJs would pause the music. Hey, man, a car pulling in. Don't let them shop. You know what I'm saying? So after 66 days of this, like I said, those celebrations were every Friday. But after 66 days, even in the rain and on those really, really cold days, on the, on the rainy days, I'd be out there with the rain gear. The team would be out there with umbrellas just letting them know that nothing will stop this. So did you see anybody you know still shopping there while you was out there? Don't you know, hold it, bro. You, you Don't know hold what? It. It's 2021. Yeah, you know what? Stop letting these and, fucking and, and, niggas and, make and, it. And I told them that they were gonna have to be held accountable. They are. That's but, what uh, I asked you. Yeah, but for real though, it was it was it was it was a, it was a couple coons, man, early in the process, and um, they were like, you know, they ain't never said shit to me, and we've been shopping here since we were kids. I said, we all been shopping here since we were kids. You right. Know? So before we could buy buy tobacco, tobacco legally, we were shopping at this store. This is the hood store. They selling single cigarettes. This is this is the store we all been going to for yeah. years. That don't mean that they're going to call us black bitches and cockroaches mm. and monkeys. Nope, they're not going to do that. You know what I mean? Because if Donald Sterling can lose his team for calling somebody a nigga, they can definitely lose the corner store in our neighborhood because right. we have the power. Two of them gas pumps don't even fucking work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dog. And it's, uh, it's just time, man. It's time. And, you know, my, my, biggest, my biggest hope throughout all of this is would, would be that... Uh, People all across the nation will see this and just understand that we don't have to. We don't have to take it. Yeah. You know, people been hitting me up from all around the nation. It's a group right now that's boycotting the store in Aurora, Illinois, and I, you know, I've kind of locked in with them uh, somewhat, and I'm giving them pointers. Uh, you know, how they should be addressing the media when they come. Um, you know, but this is the information that we have to spread, and, and we have to connect the dots. Right. But I think that that when you did that, fuck Jimmy Friday. And niggas was coming out partying and smoking hookah. 
and having fun. Mm -hmm. That's what, well, that was the icing on the cake. They hate to see some niggas having fun. And they tried everything they could do to stop it. They tried to paint us as thugs. They like, oh, they're out hey, here we guns. all thugs. Stop saying this shit. <laughs> we thugs. They we all they, that. They we got, be thugs. They we got, got guns. guns. They got to stop you trying to use that against us. And we nigga. definitely got guns because the Patriots got their guns. Nigga, and everybody you know got some guns yeah, we and some make, bullets too. Yeah, we got them motherfuckers. Nigga, I be going to yeah. Kennesaw to buy my bullets. I be yeah. right there in line with them You know where to go. You know where to go? What you got a MAGA hat? I'm yeah, no. <laughs> I got a nigga hat. I'm trying to tell you. I'm trying to tell you. No, but you made a valiant point, uh, like a very valid point, though, man. We're going to exercise just like the rest of these so-called Americans. We, we're Americans. It's our constitutional right, man, and we built this country. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, you know, it's only right that, that we, we exercise all of the rights guaranteed to us by the Constitution. You know, the Even right. if they not. We about to act like they are. And we have to. We got to. And we have We've to. We've been sitting back yeah. being, I've been saying, we've been passive for so long, that we got to take some goddamn rights. Like you rights. said, we can march. We and can ain't shit going to happen to us if we take our dogs with us. That's the trick. If next big, next big function, we got to take dogs with us. They don't even got to be ferocious dogs. It's just that dogs dog. pull at the heartstrings of white people. You are right, man. You know show up with some motherfucking Pomeranians and shit. You might be protected if you bring some dogs with you. Jack Russell Terriers. All of that. All types of Labradors of and shit. All Don't bring the Rottweilers and shit. We got to bring our Chihuahuas and shit out. Shout out, kid. Yeah. That's how we getting down. <laughs> I, and I respect it, man. You as a black man, you out here putting it down for your community, and you standing for something righteous, man. You ain't going to never get the praise that you're supposed to get for what you did to protect your community. That's why we had to get you on here. Yeah, I appreciate you, man. And I appreciate you. And I appreciate y'all like, uh, being a reputable source of information, man, for us as a people. That's very important that, uh, you know, our black media, you know, uh, take take situations like these and we make sure that we, we spread the news abundantly. Yeah. So, uh, you know, we can get the real information because this is what it's about. And it's not a black empowerment plan without a black economic piece because this is America. Right. And that's the only thing that they respect <clears> the <throat> dollars. So we got to hit them in their motherfucking pockets. That's right. You know what I'm saying? And we ain't trying to take your shit. We just trying to get our shit. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we don't want your shit. Yeah, exactly. We need reparations. We need, you know, it's... It's, it's well, first, my brother, to get some reparations, we, go. we gotta do some preparations. <laughs> you know what I mean? Before we get to doing the preparations, some niggas gonna have to be evacuated. You understand that? Black power. <laughs> That's black power, yeah. No, nah, I'm just talking shit, man, but I love to see that, man, because, you know, it's just like you said, on, in every corner of, you know, the so-called black community, there's somebody profiting. Off our pain, off our struggle, off our misery, whether they selling us liquor to try to make us feel better or... It's fucked up, though. I mean, it's a real thing, though, man. Um, you know, they, they, they're preying on us, you know what I'm saying? And it's... People have made it a habit, you know, so this is... this is For years, they're used to doing this. And, you know, like I said, they're selling the single cigarettes, you know, even in the, in the black neighborhood. That's so running. fucking racist. What a nigga gonna do with one fucking cigarette? <laughs> <laughs> Can't stand you, motherfucker. Come on, man. <laughs> nah, that's man. Brother, that's you, bold <laughs> as hell. Yeah, they praying on us, man. You and know? they probably sell a hundred individual cigarettes a day. Man, when I say they selling so many cigarettes, man, you know what I'm saying? That's an FDA violation. He's a violation of tobacco laws. Ooh. You know, like, Ooh. I tried to hit them from every single angle I could think of. You know, I, even code enforcement. Code enforcement came in one day because the bathroom was deplorable. It, yeah, they always said, no bathroom, no bathroom. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, go to the one across the street from uh, Perimeter Mall. See if that Exxon looked like the one in Zone 6. Hell no. They wouldn't allow it. Mm -mm. So why do we allow it? You know what I'm saying? Why do we put up with it? We don't have to put up with that. That's what they expect my seven-year-old daughter to walk into if she's in a tight, if she got to use the bathroom. That's what they think of her. That's what they think about the somebody grandma when they go in there? Yeah. That's what they think of that? That's exactly what they think. Yeah, and that's why they need to be spanked out about it, for real. You yeah. know what I'm saying? That's why and they you know the, the crazy part is that's probably not even the worst one. Mm-mm. Couldn't be. Because it get bad. I know, because like, just bad. hearing you describe this, I'm like, nigga, that's, that's, that's every goddamn gas station. Yeah. Swats. Yeah, it is. But we shouldn't feel like that about it. Like, we should put our foot down and be like, yo, who, who are you playing with? Who are you playing with? Who are you talking to, first of all? Why do you think you can talk to us like that? Because we don't have to deal with that. And we won't deal with that. And we've shown that we won't deal with that. We're not going to put up with it. 
you know have you saying? spoke to the community? Like, what would the community like to see happen after this? Because I know the crackheads over there mad at you. Well, you didn't got our goddamn stuff <laughs> shut down. That's Not a, uh, like a motherfucking John Burrow, man. man. <laughs> <laughs> You done, you done shut the goddamn store down. <laughs> no, nah, but everybody agrees, though, man. Because everybody, you know, at first, everybody was like, man, you know, we've been shopping here. But after a while, people were like, you know what? They, they did talk to me like that. And they did talk to my mama like that. And they did call my uncle this. And they, they have said this to my cousin before. And you're right, bro. Fuck them. We don't have to shop there. So it turned into that. And, and, and the community agrees that the store should be black owned. You know what I mean? It should be a black-owned establishment. We should walk in and maybe have access to some fresh smoothies in the morning. Or, you know what I'm saying, maybe some breakfast sandwiches. Some fruit. Something, bro. Something beneficial. You know what I'm saying? Something that ain't going to kill us because you walk in there and everything in there kill you. From the tobacco, like the, the hood get uh, higher tobacco promotions. Like you, we walk in, it look like a, a circus behind the, behind the glass, dog. All these colors and shit. You go on the other side of town? They might have some swishers or some, some shit that motherfuckers don't even smoke. You, you know what I'm saying? What did you say? Swisher sweet? Yeah, or you, you, know, you know what I'm saying? This one here? It might have. <laughs> this one? This one, which one, just, which one you want? Yeah, you see Hold what I'm on, saying? And they take the box and they're like, we well, just get what you want. Exactly. I don't yeah. know what the, I don't know what the goddamn backwood is. Yeah. Yeah, you go in the hoods, you can find a, a lemon pepper flavor uh, blunt wrap. Nigga, you know what I'm saying? No bullshit, though. For real, though. I was, I seen some pumpkin spice. Uh, do you know the, the fake blunts with the strip on it? The showgirls or whatever. <laughs> oh, it's just the show, like a show, strip on a pole. I know you're talking about. And they five for a dollar. I know you're talking about. You yeah. seen them shit? Yeah, I, I wouldn't smoke them. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. I mean, that's just fucking amazing, though. I'm just like, nigga, five bloods for a dollar? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Then they changing the prices. It just goes on and on. Like, I, this guy heard Don't matter. He, you go in that bitch every day. You'll never pay the same price twice. See what I'm saying? No consistency. You know? And it's not nothing for us to just overlook. Like, it's, right. it's, a, it's a serious thing. Like, when I was younger, our grandfathers were owners. Our grandfathers owned the local stores. You know what I mean? Somewhere in between that generation and this current generation, we sold off the ownership. You know yeah. what I mean? And it's deeper than somebody playing with us in our neighborhood. We should be owning this dirt. It Everything in there can kill you. You right as a motherfucker, man. Today. Today? It's serious. You own one. <laughs> I never look at these whole ass gas stations the same. For real though, we got to get together. We got to link it. We got to connect the dots, man. And, and you know, even with this, even with this boycott, the reason why this is successful, you know, people shout me out. They say, look, you know, what I'm saying, like, you, you did a, you did a solid thing, but it took the whole hood coming together, and that's the secret. The secret is the unity. The secret is that once everybody linked up, can't nobody fuck with us. And that's the real secret. That's what other communities have figured out is that if they work together, then they'll be a force that, that's unstoppable. And this, it was from, you know, uh, restaurants. What's cracking? Pull up and bring us crab trays. People pull up when it started getting cold, bringing hand warmers. Everybody was bringing Gatorades, whatever. People would say, look, what's your cash app? I say, just bring us some supplies. You know what I mean? Don't don't give us any money. Bring us stuff that we might need. So it would turn into a barbecue, or it would turn into, you know, just just a situation, man. Like, I like it, any, anything you could think of, the community came together and supplied it, and it was just a beautiful black moment. And it was it was up to all of us to make it happen. And shout out to Zone Six for standing up and, and being an example. Hell yeah! Shout out to Zone Six. Yeah. That's yeah. real as hell, man. Speaking of shout out to Zone Six, man. Shout out to some of the people that like say their name, people that helped you oh, organize man. and get um, this ball rolling on this project. Man, shout out, man. Let me tell you, this is it's the solid sister I met during the course of this. She's from the hood. Um, she's been living in Alabama. After she finished college, she was in Alabama. She heard about the story from one of one of our mutual friends. And uh, she hit me up on IG. She said, what's up, bro? I love what you're doing. You solid as fuck. I'm coming up there to help you. She left her home in Alabama and came and stood with me every single day, dog. And, you know, big shout out to her. Big shout out to Mimi, Dr. Minor. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Trouble, the rapper Trouble came out of school. You yeah, know, big school. Out, yeah, used this platform. You know, right now we're in a, uh, we're in a uh, fundraising uh, process trying to raise the funds to purchase the store. Scoob has uh, pledged $100,000 towards the store. 
Uh, he's reached out to some of his other rich friends. That, so glad uh, he ain't called me, boy. You know what I'm saying? But you know, uh, yeah, yeah, man, yeah, man. Over this mother, yeah. That wouldn't get it. Nah, man, it, it got a. <laughs> That's stupid. Shit, That's stupid. don't some money. <laughs> hey, look, the price of the store is over three million dollars. What the fuck? No. It's a. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> ain't no gas station working for goddamn three minutes. Hey man, hey you. That be, shit ain't gonna praise. I'm telling you. Hey, ain't hey, praise. hey, you, you, you be surprised, bro. <laughs> you know it's a, uh, it's a, it's a, it's a real estate and a and a store deal, and there's a, a dry cleaners and a vacant barber shop on the on the property as well. So uh, man, ain't you no know, way I pay three million for that. I have my. But you know what though, man? We are in Atlanta, Georgia. Everything to the price go down. Five, five, five. <laughs> Man, give me that money. Scoob says y'all ain't too dangerous over here. Woo! <laughs> hey man, but you, you know uh, seven today. For real, <laughs> for real though, man. For real. But that's how you uh you sit out there and 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 you, and you punish them folks, man, for handling us like that. And we could you know we could potentially drive the price of the store down. Yeah, we are. More, you know, they ain't you no know, way they about to come in our hood. And sell us our shit that we just took from these folks for three million dollars. That is robbery. <laughs> See what I'm saying? Fuck no. Mm -mm. But um, yeah, so like I was saying, big big shout out to school. Shout out to uh, Scotty Smart and, yeah. and the Smart Foundation. You know he came in and uh, you know provided resources. He helped us out. Shout out to my brother Fresh Goods in Atlanta. You know what I'm saying for using his platform. And uh, you know like I said, it's it's a community. Community effort, man. You know, it took all of us. You know, the local churches were donating meals. Um, you know, I want to, uh, you know, the Thursday, the Tuesday before Thanksgiving, we teamed up, uh, myself along with uh, Trouble, the Smart Foundation, and Fresh Goods. We passed out over 300 turkeys for Thanksgiving right That's here on up. that same corner. Um, we passed out like uh, over a thousand boxes of fresh produce to our community that's dope so you know these are these are some of the initiatives that we want to kind of try to continue you know what i'm saying from that corner after we purchase this land you know do some of that same community work you know because that's what it's about it's like i said it's about connecting these dots bro hell yeah well shit that's dope as hell and i appreciate you coming on here telling me a dope ass story with a positive ending <clears throat> I'm going to reach out to some of my followers and we're going to see if we can help y'all get that story together. That's a lot, though. I think they're robbing us. Hey, man. Hey, if this is prime real estate. This is Atlanta, Georgia. Is it close to a Walmart? It's right by the Walmart. Oh, nigga. You didn't say that part. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's right by the Walmart on Gresham, man. Anybody from my hood, y'all know what it is. It used to be the Phillips 66. That's crazy. It's the racist the exile own now. The, own the Walmart, they're going to hear this because they watch the show. They're going to be like, yeah, we got to buy it. They they don't need to play with us either. We'll, we'll shut them down too. Sam's Club in no time. Hey, we'll shut them down too, dog. We're not gonna let nobody play with us. Well, we letting them know. 2021, you ain't ain't no more bullshit going on. Now, if you got a terrible situation going on in your neighborhood, don't make me send my nigga over there. I'm telling you, because we it coming. don't take but two months to get you up out of there. Hey, man. Drop your social media though, so they can catch uh, up with you. Check me out on Instagram at Scapegoat Jones. That's Scape, S-C-A-P-E, Goat, Jones. A lot of people don't uh, know what Scapegoat is. That's the motherfucker who get blamed for everything. There we go. Every black Blame man him. in America, yeah. yeah. We all the scapegoats. Exactly. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Uh, please feel free to check out the website at don'tstopdon'tshop.com. And uh, there is an option on there to donate if you'd like to donate. If you can't afford to donate, just share the story with your cousins, with your uncles and your aunties, your mom yeah, and your daddy. Because somebody got some money. You know what I'm saying? Somebody does. And also, <clears throat> I also want to say if we have any uh, industry professionals, because it's really, really hard throughout this process for us to find black people that are familiar with the energy space. You know what I'm saying? We, we traditionally and historically don't own these stores. So it's hard to find someone who's, who's familiar with the gas station industry. So if you do have industry knowledge, 
please, please get in touch. You know what I'm saying? If you have any ideas. Oh, and about, don't think that they got to be black. So that's the limit. Yeah. Because be, other people will be like, oh, damn, I was going to help you when you said black. Yeah, no, I mean, no, I mean, like, you know, any anybody that has some industry knowledge, you know what I'm saying? That's what I noticed about them other races, though. They sensitive. If you be like, any black people out here trying to put me in, they be like, oh, I thought you wanted to be black. Yeah, no, nah, no. Nah. Anybody with some industry knowledge, you know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, any any real estate experts, man, that might be able to get creative. Okay. If you have any ideas, please get in touch with us. I Come got some to the people table. to put you in touch with. Cool. I look I forward to it. I know this dude. I know this black dude. Okay. Guess what he do? What he do? He he the whole. He run the whole bank. Oh, okay. He run the bank. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Citizen Trust. They got a bank. Okay. Yeah. And it's ran by yeah. some black folks. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And I know about that. Yeah. I saw that. I you saw that episode. Saying? Yeah. That's dope. See, I know he's connecting the dude. these dots. Exactly. He's connecting these dots. And if man. he don't, if he can't do it. He knows somebody. I'm pretty so sure. the people that you're gonna I'm be knowing sure after I tell you the nigga, I know you. At least you'll know some better people who can tell you saying? some better shit. And there we go. Who can link you with the there right we go. one? Connect these dots, man. Let's that's see all we doing, bro. That's the power. But look, there you have it, man. That's the update. Word on the street. That's what's going on around the city. Shout out to my man, Scapegoat Jones. This is your 85 South Show, in depth, exclusive. There my nigga. There we go. Hey, Jail.